Oi! We talked about some pretty good stuff relating to New World yesterday, but today we need to talk about the devs Q&A, which was not exactly a big hit with just about anyone. They once again avoided some of the more crucial questions that were asked, some of the most popular questions. Once again, non-use on the arena rewards either. So people are not happy. And I can somewhat understand that they don't want to talk about topics that they really have no use on at all, but then you'll see with the questions here that that's not necessarily implied anyways. Let's start with the PvP related questions and then go into the general ones. They were asked if they have any data on how players spend their time in the game. The answer was that most players who play PvP also do a lot of PvE. There aren't a ton of players that solely do one kind of activity, or just PvP or just PvE. And the PvP intense players in the game are roughly a third of the player base. Now what they kind of left out here, they did mention that these stats were different at the start, but it's worth keeping in mind that overall New World is a game that has very much been developed towards PvE. You have to do a certain amount of PvE even as a PvPer because a lot of the rewards, a lot of the artifacts come from PvE. I am someone who used to originally almost exclusively PvP and then when PvP kind of slowed down a bit after launch I did some PvE because you know I need some gold I need to farm a little bit did my trade skills a little bit of dungeons because there wasn't really anything else to do and they released new dungeons and they released mutations but they didn't really release any PvP related stuff at the time so it just kind of naturally happened and even other new content like Sandworm was also PvE now I am someone who does do both in general though my preference is strongly towards PvP but I think New World does force this kind of mix, so I don't really think these stats are representative of much of anything. Somebody asked when the devs will play their first OPR map. This was interpreted by them as the person implying they've never played OPR before, and that's why the question is being asked. But I thought the question was more about what they did with previous content with Merkguard ones, uh, where they played as a group, as a dev group, and recorded that and showed that. That was just my interpretation of the question anyways. Either way, they said that, well, they have been playing OPR since 2021. Uh, they played it recently, as Scott said, he played two of them last night. Uh, it is one of their most played modes. Uh, they see the most replayability in it. And they acknowledge the different developments that OPR has gone through, like Bow PR or Door PR. Even though they state there is still of Bow PR going on, and they know that before that it was the muskets. And they are bringing these door adjustments in Season 5, so that changes being made to OPR. I think this is just a bigger picture thing. I think uh, the question here was not about, hey, what's the current OPR meta or something like that, but rather, hey, this game mode would really need some love in general. It got a minor rework not too long ago, but that rework was so minor that it's hardly noticeable in the overall meta of how the game mode is played. And other than that, it feels very similar-ish to its starting point. And I played it during the closed beta and I thought that at the time it felt like an unfinished mode, a good work in progress. And that's kind of where it stayed for the most part. It never felt like it was fully finished up. And also it's very much still the only accessible PvP mode that we have right now with arenas having infinite queues on many servers and with war just not being accessible to many players and also being locked to specific times. And on the topic of arenas, of course, another question that was brought up once again is if there will be crossworld arena in the near future. The answer here had kind of changed. So the question was if there's a chance and the answer was yes, there is a chance. They cannot guarantee near, but it's definitely something that is banging around their skulls and they are absolutely working on it. This is extremely vague and weird considering how much earlier crossworld arenas were meant to be on the original roadmap. So again, my impression here is that they want to tie this to the new matchmaking system or something along those lines, some role balance system. They want to bring this with another bigger feature and that's why they're delaying it. It would probably be smart to somewhat communicate that more, but either that or they want to prioritize another mode before it and just don't want to mention that yet. And as a last thing on the PvP side, musket traps will affect mounted players in Season 5. If you're enjoying the info I'm giving you here so far, then consider subscribing and clicking the bell. If you'd like to support me further and get early trading tips for the next patch, then consider supporting me on Patreon. The first thing we have on the more general side of things is that they were called out for saying the slowing down to release quality updates and that didn't really happen. Scott said sometimes things get a little bit worse before they get better and they're putting all the effort into making season 5 as smooth as possible. 
bit of a hot take from me here. I understand why they're addressing this because obviously it's this whole thing of making the players feel hurt and acknowledging their mistakes. But if this is the answer that they can give us, I don't think there's much purpose in answering a question like this. Like, yeah, of course, they would like to release things bug free and polished. And that I think is true for every game developer ever that's trying to make money. So it doesn't really give us any new information. Either the patch will release polished or it won't. The achievement spam when entering an instance has been an issue for a while. Strangely, the devs said this only affects some people. As such, they can't promise that they'll be able to fix it in Season 5. And they also say, if this happens to you, please report it. You just need to report it once, not every time it happens. Just so they basically can flag your account to check if they can find any anomalies or any consistencies with other players that have it. They say they found a possible part of the issue and fixed that, but it seems like there's still more going on. I'm a bit surprised by the fact that apparently this doesn't affect everyone. I'm assuming maybe the people that aren't affected might be newer accounts. And if that's the case, that would explain why I wouldn't know much about that because most of the people that I know have been playing for a longer time. But other than that, we'll just have to wait and see. Apparently, some people have been saying that you can possibly disable this notification uh, with Season 5, so it doesn't pop up at all. It's not quite clear if this includes all of the achievements, because some are not labeled as achievements, but we'll see. Possibly you may not need to see them if you just turn it off. Next question after asked, why are artifact quests limited at all? Why do we have any restrictions on the amount of those? The reason for this is the general limited data capacity per character. There's only so much they can store in a character. And they're doing some backend changes at the moment to reduce the size of the stored files, which will allow a further increase for these quests in the future. And speaking of future, we also have a couple of dead servers. And the question is what will happen with those in the future. The devs are currently looking at merges, but they have some delays on that because the team that usually does that is working on something quote unquote, super exciting. My assumption here that this is the same thing that they're doing all of their vague mystery statements about and that is probably that they're somehow setting up the servers to function with consoles so that players can actually connect from console which will obviously fill those servers a bit anyways but I think that may be the bigger picture here. It may explain why they're not prioritizing the dead servers more. Once again of course not exactly positive for the current player base. They were asked what's up with the sand room because that's basically not updated for the current season in any way. Uh, the rewards are fairly lackluster and yeah, it's just dragging behind even though it's meant to be a major piece of content. They say this is on their to-do list but they have no ETA for that. Uh, one thing they specifically mentioned are the rewards. There were some issues with missing lore pages. They said they deployed a lot of fixes for that in season 5 and let them know if there are any more after that. All in all, this Q&A had a lot of coming eventually things, but that's also not surprising when Season 5 is announced, we know what's coming in Season 5, and they basically don't want to talk about Season 6 yet, so they can't really announce anything for a while, which makes these Q&As a fair bit less useful. I hope you enjoyed this video regardless. If you did, consider liking it, subscribing, clicking the bell, the usual stuff. And if you'd like to support me further, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks to all of my patrons who already do exactly that, and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.